problem. <laughs> it's easy to get people to sleep. Any anesthesiologist in here? Nobody? Any medical doctor in here? Yeah. What do you do? Uh, it's a GI man. GI is good. At least you deal with people who are awake. All right. La ilaha illallah. Uh, this is an issue, the qadar is a long issue, to be honest with you, and uh, I think there's a serious misconception in the masses about it. So and it's, it's, it's a whole sort of day talking on its own. But let me try to very, be very brief in a minute or two. Allah Ta'ala's knowledge, just like the rest of his attributes, is eternal with no beginning, everlasting with no end, not created, not similar to the creation, and not subject to change. And I know this is not aqidah session, but I need to sort of just give you a little piece. Which means what? Let's say Allah's knowledge. Allah's knowledge is eternal with no beginning. It did not happen after it was not there. Allah was not, not knowledgeable then he became all-knowing. He was not, not all-knowing, and he became all-knowing. Because if it happened, if an attribute of his happened, then before it, he was not attributed with the attributes of Godhood. Perfection that's suitable to Godhood. He wasn't. And that means he couldn't be God to start with if he wasn't attributed with Godhood. Okay. And his knowledge is everlasting. It is, his knowledge is not similar to the knowledge of the creation. And his knowledge is not subject to change either. Why? Because change implies imperfection one way or the other. Change, if you either change from perfection to imperfection or from imperfection to perfection, both inapplicable to the creator. So therefore, change is inapplicable to him because change anyway is his creation. And the creation does not subjugate the creator. The creator subjugates the creation. So change, Allah causes wills for change to change. Change does not change Allah's attributes. All right, so I mean, I'm, again, I, it's a bit heavy. Let me just try to dilute it as much as I can. And then, so it's not subject to change, not created, not similar to the creation, eternal, everlasting. So that means Allah's knowledge is eternal, everlasting, not created, not similar to the creation, not subject to change. He knew everything. He knew what happened. He knew what, what happens. He knew what will, he knows what will happen. And he knows what doesn't happen. Had it happened, how would it have happened? He knows what happened. And he knows what happens. And he knows what will happen. And he knows what doesn't happen. And all the possibilities, if it had happened, how would it have happened? It's ilm. The ilm Allah. Wa fawqa kulli the ilm alim. Very nice. He created us. With his knowledge or not? Does he know what will happen? What happened? Does he know what happens? Does he know what will happen? Definitively, not on a not on a non-definitive way, on a definitive way. Yes, of course he does. Because he knows it definitively, he decreed it as such, based on his definitive knowledge of what happens and what will happen. Yet 
he enabled you to make a choice. He did not strip you from the power to choose. He did not make you a robot with no choosing. He enabled you to make a choice by saying, You can do good, you'll, that, that you'll, it'll purify you. You can do evil and that will take you down. So him enabling you to make a choice. The reason we don't understand that is because we put time to Allah. But time is inapplicable to the Creator. Well, time is delusion for you anyway. There's no time. But you think we have time, okay? Keep thinking that way. Once we pass to the next world, you realize that the past, the present, and the future is all the same. It's all here now already. It's not coming. Time is not linear like we think it is. You know, one year, then next year comes after that, and then... Time is not. But anyway, let's not go into time now because that's a whole different su subject. So we say then, how does he know what will, what will happen next year? It, he, and he knew it before and he decreed it upon me, yet I still have a choice. It, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen for you, not for him. But what if I changed my mind the last minute? I was going to throw this pencil at her eyes. And then last minute I said, you know what, I shouldn't do that, that's not, I, I, right there, I, okay, let me let it down. What Allah Ta'ala knew that you were going to do that and that was written for you. And then because you remembered you should not do evil things, you did not do it. What if I was going to walk out on the street and because of my mother's prayer for me, the car was going to hit me and because of her prayers for me, it did not happen. It's already in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I don't want you, when we say it's already written, because sometimes the masses use the word written, decreed, it's already predestined and that's the, I don't like the word predestined at all actually. But anyway, I like the word decreed. Okay, sure it's decreed. But that's decreed based on Allah's knowledge, which is eternal, ever, everlasting, not created, not similar to the creation, not subject to change. That doesn't mean He stripped you from the power to change right now, because right now you can stand up, or you don't even need to stand up, you just slap the person right next to you. You have the power. Please don't do that. <laughs> but you can take your hand right now and slap the person right next to you with the power He gave you right the second. Or you can turn around and tell him, I love you. You can, you can feel free to do that if you want to. If, if you don't, I'll tell you, I love you all. So, you know, I, I got the reward now. You hold, you withhold from yourself. I don't care. <laughs> so now the power, right now, right the second, I've just given you an explanation of how you can actually use what Allah enabled you to do. Did Allah know exactly what you're going to do? Eternally, before you were even born? Yes. Did he decree that for you? Yes. Is there any way you can abolish his decree? No. Why? Because his decree is based on his definitive knowledge of what will happen, not speculative knowledge. Does that make sense? Short, but because the Qadr takes about three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an Aqidah issue and when we have Aqidah we talk about that business.